All right, so here we are with compartment three on Rescue 5. Um, we'll start off here with our uh, pull-out tray. This is a transverse compartment. Um, so this is compartment three, as well as compartment seven um, over on the officer side. So we'll check out the other side as well. So compartment three right here, the, the uh, transverse tray, we have hand tools. Um, so we have sets of irons, uh, both heavy irons and standard um, eight pound axe irons. Um, we have six foot New York hooks um, and some bolt cutters. Uh, the other big thing that's on here is our um, Paratech gold strut. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about the Paratechs, we're gonna do a training on that coming up soon. Uh, and then there's also a brief overview video also on this channel. Um, but these are our gold struts. So you might hear us call them the gold struts, the longshore struts. They do the same thing as our other Paratech struts uh, in terms of stabilization. They are just rated um, for more weight at uh, higher heights. Uh, they can also extend higher than the, gold, the, uh, the gray struts. On this tray here, we have lighting equipment. So uh, we have two portable scene lights um, back here we have another portable scene light that has a stand, which I'll show you in a second. We have a cutter's edge vent saw with a bullet chain on it. We have a Husqvarna um, chainsaw here, so our cutter's edge saw of course is for venting. Roofs, uh, our Husqvarna chainsaw is for uh, cutting trees, um, or we, we could cut um, other obstacles, fences, um, other things like that, out of the way with it. Um, back here we have a case of water bottles, bar, uh, bottles of bar oil, up top here on the right we just have some spare tarps and on the left here this is something that's new for a lot of people, uh, our DeWalt light tower. Um, this has come in handy a lot of times already, whether it's fire investigations after the fact or uh, scene lighting for any type of rescue call at night. This is used simply by pressing this gray button here, sliding down. That extends the feet and then it has two different uh, telescoping uh, beams here. So we can telescope it, lock this back in. Our head then pivots, and operation is simply a button uh, on the side here. So it has two different settings, um, and it's it, it has come in handy a lot of times for us uh, for portable scene lighting. So um, this is something that uh, those of you who are not rescue qualified, who might just be on the scene helping out, uh, if it's if it's dark out or you know, even if it's light out, but um, we're working in the cab of, a, of a, an overturned vehicle or something like that. This is something that, that may come in handy. Again, I mentioned in one of the other videos, um, you're never gonna get in trouble for staging equipment if it's not in the way. So if you're not gonna be operating uh, tools on a rescue call, you're not checked off to be doing that, uh, start staging equipment, bring it out to the staging tarp. As long as it's out of the way and you were not at that time required to be doing something else, uh, it doesn't hurt to do that. So this is something good to always stage unless, of course, you know, uh, there's absolutely gonna be no need for it. Uh, only maintenance on this is to just check the battery. So just like with the reciprocating saws, the battery has a button here, press it, make sure it's got three bars of charge before we put it back on the rig. In here we have some broom heads, push broom heads for cleanup it calls, and uh, a um, stand for our light that was in the back there. So a portable scene light stand. Up here uh, we have a backboard, uh, a longboard with straps on it, and then we have our Stokes basket up top here. I'm going to pull the Stokes basket out momentarily, and we're going to go through everything in there. But first, we will check out the other side of this transverse compartment. All right, so looking at the other side of this compartment, much of it is the same. 
Uh, so we have our Stokes basket here. Again, we'll check that out momentarily. We have our hand tools. Some hand tools are only accessible, of course, from one side or the other. Uh, we try to have it sort of spread out so that there's some bolt cutters over there and some over here, some irons there and some here. Uh, and then the New York hooks, because they're six feet, you can get from either side. We have our gold struts. On this side, instead of brooms, we have squeegees. So there's uh, push brooms over there. There's actually one sweep broom here. Again, if we uh, need to help clean up debris or something on an accident. Uh, and squeegees for overhaul or salvage. Um, up here, we have a little giant ladder. And then down here is our medical equipment. So the med bag has changed a lot since um, many of you have been through rescue training. Um, we're not going to go through it in excruciating detail, but um, it's fully loaded um, for, for our needs. You know, we don't have um, ALS equipment in here, but we have a full setup of BLS equipment. There is even a manual suction in here. And on top of it, we have um, our uh, ASFAC or active shooter first aid kit. So that's got tourniquets in it, um, quick clot, gauze. We have our AED, always just making sure that it says OK on there where the battery is. Uh, in our old med bag, the oxygen kit was included in the med bag. They're now two separate units, so we have our red med bag and we have our black oxygen kit here. This has all the tubing that we need, it has a regulator, it has our oxygen wrench. So everything that you need is right in there. Back here, we have some uh, inflatable splints. So this isn't something that we're going to be getting off you know, at the scene of a crash. Um, but let's say we have some sort of accident um, in the woods or you know, off the beaten path, and we're going to be hiking somewhere with our stokes. Uh, that's something that is certainly good to grab so that we have them just in case. Um, there's no saying that we can't grab that on a vehicle accident, but of course that's normally not our primary responsibility. Whereas um, when we're sort of you know off the beaten path and we might have some sort of uh, specialized rescue, um, we may be the first ones out there, uh, you know, beating EMS. So uh, remember to grab those. We also have in here our KED, um, so our. Um, half spine board with the straps that we can use on vehicle rescues. And then one last thing here that gets sort of forgotten about, but we've actually used quite a few times since we got them, are animal oxygen masks. So um, these have in them uh, tubing, oxygen tubing, and an adapter right here that goes straight to that tubing. So um, just like you would hook up um, a non-rebreather or a nasal cannula to an oxygen tank. Uh, you can hook this right up and then this has a rubber gasket on it that goes around the animal's nose and we can give oxygen to an animal through these masks. So besides the Stokes basket, that wraps up this compartment. Uh, we'll check out the Stokes basket now and that will be it for compartment three and seven on Rescue 5. Okay, so here we have our Stokes basket from Rescue 5. I'm going to unbuckle these and we'll go through each piece of this individually. So starting off here, we have some wool blankets um, for packaging patients, keeping them warm when it's cold out. If it's uh, during the summer uh, and we're hiking with this thing, you want to sort of evaluate what we might need. And if you're sure that we don't need something, go ahead and remove it. Um, those blankets don't seem like a lot, but together these two blankets probably weigh six pounds or so and um, you know any extra weight that we can get out of here if we're hiking up Mount Nittany um, during the summer it, that's gonna that's gonna help us out it's also less stuff to carry back down once we have a patient in here next thing here we have our um, spinal mobilization blocks or CID blocks with two straps uh, so you should always have two straps one for the chin one for the forehead we have our litter uh, spider or litter bridle. We'll talk about that at the end because that's going to take the longest. We have a bag of um, collars 
uh, these five collars. We have our webbing bag, so this has a new addition to it. We have six of these adjustable straps. Um, so while we're carrying this, um, just to take a little bit of weight off our arms or to ensure that we have a hold of it, you know, if we're going over something sort of rocky, uh, we made up six two inch webbing straps here. So these are adjustable and they unclip. So you can use these a couple different ways. You can just run it through here. And when we run it through, um, you want to run it through uh, one of these um, eyelets here rather than on the bar where it can just move back and forth. So we could just run it through there, put it over our shoulder and adjust it to the proper height. Um, that way it can put some more weight on our shoulder and, and down through our, our body rather than just on one arm. Um, another uh, way that we can do this so that just to prevent any movement is um, by weaving through here, we can make a, uh, a girth hitch. And again, it's still adjustable. And we can put our shoulder through this uh, and grab a hold of the Stokes basket. What's nice about these being adjustable is that if, uh, say we have six people on the Stokes basket and we have two people just following along and someone needs a break, um, if we were to have used a webbing loop to tie in, then we might have to adjust that if a shorter person is swapping for a taller person or vice versa. With this, we can just quickly adjust it and make sure that it fits whoever, uh, whoever is swapping in and out. Also in here, uh, we have some utility rope for tie-ins, for uh, Stokes basket tie-ins, and we have webbing for, again, Stokes basket tie-ins. So the Stokes basket has straps on here, and if we're just carrying someone um, horizontal, then usually those suffice. If we're carrying them horizontal, but it's going to be a long ride, or we're going over some rocky terrain where we're short, sort of unsure of footing, um, we might want to use a 30-foot piece of webbing to do a Stokes basket tie-in. Um, and then, of course, if we're doing anything that is more than horizontal, if we're going vertical at all, uh, we want to tie in with webbing. So that is our webbing bag. Um, these straps are a new addition to it that haven't been here uh, for most of, the, most of you who've gone through Rescue Perk. Last thing in here is a uh, longboard. So keep in mind we have a longboard on the rescue as well that we can use um, you know, at vehicle crashes or something if we don't want the entire Stokes basket out. But if we're going hiking with this thing, um, we don't want to forget our longboard so we have one that's included in here. Uh, one last thing to keep in mind is that this is, it's, the Stokes basket is multi-directional, but it has a uh, adjustable foot plate in here that's always down at one side. So that's, uh, that can be moved between any of these eyelets here. So if we have uh, a child um, who's only taken up, you know, half to two thirds of this, we can move that foot plate up. If we have an adult, we can move it down and then we can cinch that up and adjust it uh, to their height just to prevent any movement laterally um, throughout the Stokes basket. So that's everything except for the bridle, which we'll talk about now. So this is the bridle bag or the spider bag. First thing we have on here is uh, a diagram on the outside to show how it's set up. So this is a picture of the um, anchor plate, and then on the back side we have a picture of the entire Stokes basket with the setup, just to allow you to visualize how it's set up. We'll just empty this out, talk about each piece individually. So first thing we have here is the brot or the spider itself, whatever you want. We have a uh, pompier hook or big, this, this carabiner, the style of the pompier hook, it's a quarter turn, um, and that's to attach onto our main line. We then have our anchor plate. So there's five holes on here. Each of these outside holes has, the, has straps on it. So each of these straps is divided into two. And they can clip in these eyelets here to prevent movement back and forth. We would clip this carabiner 
into eyelet there, and then we can adjust the length as needed. So that's our outside straps. We would connect to four corners. In the middle here, we have two spare carabiners for any other appliances. And then in the center, we have our HRA or our webbing ladder. So if we are raising somebody um, and we want to be able to be next to them, uh, either just being there with them as they're raised or monitoring them medically, um, we can use this rope ladder to put our foot in and step up. And that way our waist can be up above them and, and we have um, the position that we need to be able to help them out or adjust them. Also, just floating around in the back here, uh, we have 30 feet of utility rope, uh, 30 feet of half inch utility rope, we have 50 feet of 3 8 inch utility rope, and finally we have our little black bag here that uh, we affectionately call, um, or it holds what we affectionately call the barf cord. So, the barf cord is used for exactly what it sounds like. If we are raising a patient, who may become sick and throw up. We don't want them to aspirate. So we hook this carabiner back up to our anchor plate on one of our empty carabiners here. We hook the other side of our bar cord to the side that we want to be tipped. Um, the side of the stokes basket that we want to be tipped. And then we have 30 feet of utility rope here. So by standing in my atria here and having that um, the position to have mechanical advantage over this, I can pull on my pulley here that is now attached up here to my anchor plate, and that's going to tip our basket one way or the other um, to allow that person to throw up and not aspirate um, if that's the case. So that's the uh, Stokes Basket Bridle or Spider. You'll hear a couple different names for that. Litter Spider, Litter Bridle, Stokes Bridle, Stokes Spider. Um, all the same thing. There is one of these on each of our Stokes Baskets. Uh, so both of our towers, Truck 5-1 and Truck 5-2 have one of these, as well as Rescue 5. So that concludes the Stokes Basket. Um, the biggest thing with this is just making sure that all of our equipment is here. So that should be done during rig checks, of course. But before we leave um, to go on any type of hike or, or any, any type of uh, rescue off the beaten path, uh, it should be verified that everything we need is in here. This isn't all encompassing. Sometimes we might want to add something else depending on the situation. Sometimes we might want to take something out depending on the situation. Um, and that should be you know, gone over and decided before leaving the rescue. You never want to get to where you're going and realize that you don't have the necessary equipment in your Stokes basket. You also don't want to go on an entire hike and realize that you brought 30 extra pounds of equipment with you that there was no chance of, of need. So things to keep in mind for that are medical equipment. You know, if, the, if uh, EMS is not coming with us, we're probably bringing a med bag, um, water, of course, um, and any other tools that we think we might need along the way. So that's our Stokes basket. That concludes compartment three and compartment seven on rescue five. And thank you for watching.